Hey y'all, no no here. Well, this Sunday is the last Sunday before Halloween. And so I thought I would share with you today uh, what I'll call my Halloween lesson. Uh, that's why I'm wearing my devil shirt today. Uh, but uh, this lesson wasn't one of the very first lessons that uh, I started teaching. Uh, and it all came about back in the days when Harry Potter, all the books and movies and all that stuff uh, started becoming very popular. And I even noticed some of the students in my Sunday school class were talking about Harry Potter and, you know, some of them even had like some of the, you know, toys or props or t-shirts or, you know, things like that. And so I didn't know very much about Harry Potter at all, but, uh, you know, when I started doing a little bit of research into it, and I'll say up front, I've never read any of the books or seen any of the movies or anything like that. So I'm not an expert on Harry Potter. Uh, and the lesson really that I was teaching back then really wasn't specifically aimed towards Harry Potter. That's just what got me thinking about uh, the subject of witches to start with. And so, uh, really, what I wanted to get my students to think about uh, was what witches really are, and, you know, is there really any such thing as a witch? Or is that just something that's made up for Halloween or, you know, in the movies or things like that? And so I started searching the scriptures and I found that, you know, uh, the Bible doesn't speak a lot about the subject, but uh, there is some uh, uh, lessons that are taught about uh, avoiding witchcraft. And so... Uh, in Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 11, and of course Deuteronomy was the last instructions that Moses was giving to the people of Israel before they crossed the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And so if you take a look at Deuteronomy 18, verses 9 through 11, it reads something like this, or reads like this. Uh, and this, it says, when you enter, and that is when Israel enters, the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer. So we see that uh, in the NASB anyway, uh, it specifically uses the word witchcraft. So because this is God's word and God's word is 100% true, why would Moses have warned the people of Israel about people that were going to be practicing all these things, including witchcraft, if there was no such thing as witches and no such thing as witchcraft. And so I think that pretty well establishes that uh, at that time there were people who were witches and practiced witchcraft. Now, uh, is that still true today? Well, there is some evidence to support that yes, that's still true today also. 
So if we go to Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 through 12, uh, and the context of this passage, this is when Moses and Pharaoh, or Moses and Aaron went to meet Pharaoh to try to get him to let the people of Israel uh, go. And so, uh, in chapter 7, starting with verse 8, it says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Work a miracle, then you are to say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh, and thus they did, just as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron threw down his staff down before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, and the magicians of Egypt, and they did the same thing with their secret arts. For each one threw down his staff, and they turned into serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. So, the evidence that there still could be witches and people practicing witchcraft today is found in this passage. And if you think about it, uh, you know, Aaron and the sorcerers of Pharaoh did the same thing. They threw down a staff, and the staff turned into a serpent. But we know that the power for Aaron's staff to become a serpent, where did it come from? Well, it came from God, because God was the one that commanded them to do that to prove to Pharaoh that they were really from God. But Pharaoh's sorcerers did the same thing, didn't they? Or at least it appeared to be the same thing. Uh, and really it was the same thing except for the power to change Aaron's staff came from God. But where did the power for the sorcerers of Pharaoh come from? Well, there's really only other uh, one other possibility of power like that in our world, and that is the power of Satan. And so, if you put those two things together, first of all, Moses warned uh, the people of Israel that there were going to be witches and people practicing witchcraft into, in the land where they were going. And then you look at the actual example of witchcraft uh, performed by the sorcerers of uh, Pharaoh. And you put those two things together, well, is the power of God still the same as it was back then? It absolutely is. Is the power of Satan still the same as it was back then? It absolutely still is. So, you know, uh, Satan very much uh, wants the world to take him for granted, to uh, think that he's just a little cartoon character like this. Uh, Satan wants uh, people to think that, you know, Halloween is just, you know, a little game where children go to door to door and say trick or treat. Uh, and, you know, if that's what your children want to do and that's what you want to do with your children, follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But 
just remember, Satan is going to try to get the attention of your children any way he possibly can. And one of the best ways he can get your children's attention uh, is to put your mind at rest and let and convince you to let down your guard and think that all these things are harmless enough uh, and it's not going to hurt anything. And it may not. But I would say this. If, if you are warning your children about the dangers of drugs and alcohol, uh, the practice of witchcraft or worshiping Satan, uh, or your children getting involved with some time some type of a cult, that can be eternally dangerous. Drugs and alcohol are only going to affect us here while we're on earth. But uh, if Satan slowly gets control uh, of what is influencing your children, then that has eternal consequences. So, you know, you may or may not choose to use this lesson uh, and a lot of it has to, be, to do with, you know, the age of your children uh, and, you know, uh, their ability to understand uh, about demons and the power of Satan uh, and things like that. But I want to share with you uh, a post that uh, I saw on a website uh, and it's called witchvox.com and this is actually a website uh, where people who supposedly are practicing witchcraft and casting spells, uh, people who are worshiping nature or you know just outright worshiping Satan, uh, all kinds of cultic type activities. Uh, people put their profiles on this website uh, searching for other like-minded people. So let me read you the profile of this person who put their profile on this website. Uh, it says, I'm a married mother of three who has been on the pagan path for over 16 years. My great-grandmother began teaching me at age 14, and by age 16, I was leading a small coven. Now, a coven is a group of witches. Later, I retired and became a solitary practitioner. I'm currently a college student studying elementary education, and I'm hoping to teach fourth or fifth grade when I graduate. So does that scare you just a little bit? Uh, I would urge you uh, to get to know the teachers that are teaching your children. Now, whether this lady ever became a teacher and is teaching in our local schools or not, I don't know. Uh, because obviously they don't use their real name when they you know, put their profile on these websites. Uh, but I guess if, if I don't get anything else across to you is that I hope that you will at least think about, you know, what is influencing uh, your child, you know, whether it be, you know, these dark video games that are out or people that are playing those games even though your child is not playing them you know things they see on the internet on TikTok or YouTube or wherever you know all these websites like this please monitor what 
uh, what is influencing your child uh, and have honest conversations with them and warn them about the dangers of, you know, even researching this type of stuff and, and help them to understand that, that, you know, Satan wants to deceive us just a little bit at a time and then a little bit more at a time. He wants us, he wants to ease our interest in the direction he wants it to go just a little bit at a time. So, uh, I don't know if this lesson is something that you will want to teach or not, uh, but think about the implications of it. Now, I'm sorry to say there's no game to play, there's no craft to do, uh, because I never, to me, this is such a, such a serious subject uh, that I just, you know, went over this scripture with my students. Uh, I read this post uh, that this pr person, their profile that they put on this website. Uh, but there really, there's nothing, there's nothing fun or, you know, to do. Uh, I was hoping that the fact that this would kind of be a shock uh, to them as to what they felt like witches were and whether they felt like that they there might actually be such a thing as witches uh, in the time of Harry Potter when everybody was make, making such a, a light thing about it that, that it was harmless. Uh, I wanted them to at least think about it. So that's it for this week. I appreciate you watching. I'm sorry that, you know, there's no craft or anything like that. Uh, feel free to use your own imagination, but use it carefully uh, because we want to not downgrade the seriousness of this subject. So uh, if anybody teaches this lesson, I wish you'd leave me a comment and, and see uh, how it goes and how your students feel about it. Uh, as always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. God bless you, each and every one, and via con Dios.